so hi everyone if you are following the ai news you might have heard of the ide cursor.ai it is one of the best ai ids out there which can help you out with any sort of coding problem and it is just trending on internet for a very long time now one question that people ask me usually is that why i don't use cursor.ai because i haven't been into cursor for, i tried using it but i didn't like it much so today i will be telling you why i don't use cursor.ai and why you should also try avoiding it so let's get started there are certain problems that i have figured with cursor ai to be honest that i would wish to share with you as i have been working extensively with all these tools that are coming up on the internet uh, like this frequently uh, it is good for pocs no doubt about it to build out small projects but bad for real world pr projects where you have multiple files you have multiple dependencies cursor very quickly gets confused to be very honest it is good with basic toy projects as most of the llms are but not with big projects ai suggestions can be unpredictable ai suggestions are often lack precision and optimization leading to more confusion than clarity so if you are going for a real world project like for example you wish to deploy certain codes optimizations are required security flaws has to be checked debugging has to be done ai can give you a baseline solution that might work for 90% of the use cases but not for all cursor ai is paid i think i'm totally against paid resources there are many better ids that are present which are free like klein you might have heard of windsurf you might have heard of performance issues cursor.ai can be slow especially with large code bases i think there were certain lags and freezes when i was using it last time limited language support it is quite good with the common ones but if you go with some very unique languages it may falter out because see it is ultimately dependent on an llm if the llm is not trained on that language the code output would be shit privacy concerns i think this is something that is why you won't find ids like cursor.ai in your companies because there are privacy concerns we don't know what data these uh, for applications are consuming what data is getting sold there is no privacy uh, what i feel so hence uh, i try avoiding it with my private data steep learning curve to be honest using such interfaces are good initially but they might lead to confusion leading to longer onboarding process one thing that i've noticed is that these ids are changing at a very rapid pace also so i use for a user to get onboarded for a long time i wish it to be remain constant or either if it's not constant it should be making changes a little less frequently lack of community support that's for sure it's new hence we don't have major community support i have seen people asking basic questions that they don't find in the documentation also so because of these reasons i try to avoid cursor.ai because see one case is that you can't use it in your office also so if i'm coding on cursor.ai in my local system and then when i go to office i need to hard code everything i think i'm just not able to switch between these two things so this is basically creating a habit for you to use ai for coding uh, when environments where you don't get it i think you will get very frustrated and in interviews especially i think this would be a big fault that you would be doing because interviews won't happen on cursor.ai do remember this lead to a conclusion it's good to use for small toy projects but for complex projects it fails and uh, should you be using it you should be but in limits i would suggest because your career is more dependent on coding if you are a programmer uh, you would be giving interviews you need to debug stuff it might take more time for you to debug than coding out things fun to experiment but not a serious development tool for me at least thank you so much